State Police has spent much of the day searching Flag's home. The only thing that's been seen taken from the house, a pair of cats. Here's one of them here. Flag is a suspect in the murder of Anthony Puglisi and the abduction and rape of his wife. And police are now looking for evidence that could connect him to at least three other killings and several additional rapes. Delaware correspondent Lauren Wilson is standing by live outside Flag's home in the Wellington Woods development. Lauren. Lisa, state police have been here on the scene since about 9.30 this morning and we're told the search here could last clear up until midnight. Investigators are looking for anything from carpet fibers to specks of blood that could link Donald Flagg to other crimes. Well, it will be a slow, methodical search. Uh, we're looking, obviously, uh, from top to bottom in the house. State police won't say exactly what they're searching for, nor will they say exactly which crimes Donald Flagg is suspected of committing. But according to sources, investigators believe Flagg may have dumped the body of one of his alleged victims, Virginia Jilson, here near Stanton, Delaware, about six months ago. Sources say he's also being looked at for at least two other murders and several unsolved rapes. Donald Flagg became the focus of police attention last Friday when he was arrested on his job at the Newark Chrysler plant. That after Deborah Puglisi, the woman Flagg allegedly held captive in his home for five days, managed to free her bound hands just enough to call 911. Police say 46-year-old Deborah Puglisi was raped repeatedly by Flagg. He's also accused of gunning down Puglisi's husband, 50-year-old Anthony Nino Puglisi, who was inside the couple's Newark home when Flagg apparently made a random stop after seeing Deborah Puglisi at work in her yard. Donald Flagg's neighbors have been in shock all week. Now, I work out in the yard all the time, and it makes me wonder what, you know, was he looking at us or any, any of us out in the yard? And, you know, it's just a, it's a scary thought to know that our, we have a neighbor four doors behind me that could do something like this. It's very scary. Some residents told me they're even ready to move. Ironically, it was about a year ago when cops and camera crews took over this neighborhood that after an armed gunman held police at bay for about 48 hours. That man's townhouse is about a block away from here. I'm Lauren Wilson reporting live on the action cam in Bear, Delaware. Thank you, Lauren. Now, meanwhile, a fund has been established to help the Puglisi's twin children continue their college education. Today, Puglisi family attorney Bruce Hudson announced the creation of the Anthony Puglisi Memorial Fund. It will help Melissa and Michael Puglisi finish college. They are both sophomore honor students. Hudson said Deborah Puglisi is in seclusion, trying to recover from her, or her ordeal and her loss. He read a statement from Mrs. Puglisi today. I want everyone to know the two things that kept me going after I learned that my husband was murdered. My faith in God and the overwhelming desire to see my children. I knew that they needed me and that my work as a parent was not over. In her statement, Deborah Puglisi also thanked everybody for their support and thanked the police for their hard work. Anyone who wants to contribute, by the way, to the Anthony Puglisi Memorial Fund, the address is Suite 1130, 300 Delaware Avenue, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. School officials in Ventnor, New Jersey, have suspended a third grader for bringing a pocket full of bullets to class. It happened Tuesday at the Ventnor Education Complex. Now, teachers discovered that the boy had four rounds of rifle ammunition in his pocket. They say the boy told him... Uh, he found the rounds on the street. It's unclear whether that's the truth, but either way, the youngster will have to miss 10 days of school. Officials were apparently tipped off when a mother complained that her son came home from school with bullets he got in a trade with a now suspended boy. Camden County Prosecutor Lee Solomon has announced that more arrest warrants have been issued in connection with bomb scares at the Overbrook Regional High School. The warrants have been issued for three people after two recent bomb scares. So far, five juveniles and nine adults have been arrested and charged in connection with 25 bomb scares at the school earlier this year. Solomon was joined by Pine Hill officials today to assure students that the school district is taking steps to make sure their school is safe. Three College of New Jersey students are in trouble with the law tonight for helping a big-time fake ID ring. Campus police arrested the students for allegedly hosting a fake ID party earlier in the semester. They're identified as Wesley Paskowitz, Shauna Stale, and Marla DiMarcantonio. For $100, police say party guests could buy bogus New Jersey licenses from a traveling fake ID ring. The leader of the ring was arrested last month. 
Investigators say he also sold licenses at 35 other East Coast schools, including Penn, Rutgers, and Ryder. A morning truck accident is still causing problems this evening on the Schuylkill Expressway at the Blue Route. Now this is the accident scene, the ramp going from the eastbound Schuylkill to the southbound Blue Route. You see the overturned uh, truck there. Traffic heading from King of Prussia to Chester has been slowed down all day by this truck that flipped and burned just before 11 o'clock this morning. Now one person from this truck is in the hospital tonight in fair condition. Crews again have been working all day to unload the meat that is on the truck before clearing the accident completely. In the meantime, as you might imagine, this is an area to avoid if you can. The morning drive on Interstate 95 took hundreds of drivers much longer than expected today. It was a one-car accident. A car flipped over on the southbound lanes of I-95, blocking traffic near Allegheny Avenue. Chopper 6 was above this scene shortly before 6 this morning. The driver escaped serious injury, but the crash caused serious traffic delays. For almost an hour, I-95 southbound turned into a parking lot from Allegheny all the way to Cotman. Damage to cars and at least a house, one house in South Philadelphia, no accident tonight. Former Philadelphia police officer Stephen Perry was caught after a window smashing spree. He allegedly damaged at least eight cars and one house along the 1900 block of South Krosky Street. Police took him in for a psychological examination. It was about 10 years ago that Perry was removed from the Philadelphia police force after he allegedly threatened the commissioner and the mayor. Well, that controversial shooting on the New Jersey Turnpike has apparently gotten the attention of O.J. Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran. A Newark newspaper is reporting that Cochran will represent three of the four black men involved in the shooting with two white state troopers. Now, they reportedly will meet with Cochran next week. Authorities say troopers James Kenna and John Hogan pulled the men over in a van during a routine traffic stop that was last Thursday night. However, when the driver of the van allegedly tried to run down the troopers, the troopers then opened fire. Three of the men in the van were wounded. So far, no charges have been filed. A startling new discovery near O.J. Simpson's Rockingham estate, meantime, a knife that former L.A. detective Mark Furman says could be key evidence in the murders of Simpson's ex-wife Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman. Now, police came up empty when they first searched the home the night of the killings back in June 94. The knife was recently found by a construction crew. It is described as a Swiss Army knife. Furman says the Swiss Army knife was the murder weapon, and detectives found an empty Swiss Army knife box in Simpson's house. The crime lab, however, however, reportedly found no evidence on the recently discovered knife that was uh, said to be caked in mud, but Furman says that lawn fertilization combined with water could have diluted the evidence. So to not have any uh, blood on a piece of evidence like that would not be surprising or at a level so low that it would not be testable. Now, whether or not the knife is the murder weapon, Simpson, we should tell you, cannot be retried for the murders because of double jeopardy laws. An important celebration in Philadelphia today in Center City, they gathered at the Polish American Cultural Center commemorating the 207th anniversary of Poland's constitution. It is the second oldest democratic constitution in the world, second only to the United States. It was signed on May 3rd of 1791. On hand today, City Councilman Frank Rizzo, City Controller Jonathan Seidel, and Congressman Bob Borski. President Clinton sent greetings, and Councilman Rizzo presented a proclamation from the mayor. Today's event was sponsored by the Polish American Congress. Today is the 50th anniversary of the birth of the State of Israel. It's the height of celebrations which have gone on all week and continue this weekend. Tonight, Nora Mushanik visits with a local woman who's been living in Israel since the early 70s. Sixty-two-year-old Toby Schuster moved from Wynwood to Israel in the 70s, just before the Yom Kippur War. She came to Jerusalem with her husband, Leonard, who died in 1985. Leonard was a Zionist before he died, and he felt that Israel was a place to be. Toby, a gallery salesperson who volunteers at a local hospital, lives by herself in a three-bedroom apartment in the Baka section of West Jerusalem. Of course, I miss my Philadelphia friends very much. That's the the most important thing to me, my friends. Her friends and her family. Toby has three children. Her two sons also live in Israel, and her daughter will move here soon from Pittsburgh. Like many here, she wonders if the conflict between Israel and its Arab neighbors will ever end. I don't know whether we'll ever have peace, but I hope so. I don't want my children and my grandchildren going to war. But she believes Israel should not give up the occupied territories to make peace. 
Look, I had two children wounded. The weather's constantly changing, that's why we're always updating it. Nothing changes faster than the weather, but we're running a close second. Stay informed with Weather Center all day today and every day. In the next half hour, Weather Center, a comprehensive national forecast. At 40 after, Weather Center continues with highway and air travel conditions. Then the weekend outlook. And at 50 after, Storm Watch. But right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. a very messy day for many of you in the mid-atlantic and the northeast regions and it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better good evening thanks for watching weather center sponsored by gm cadillac i'm janetta jones and i'm rich johnson rain some heavy at times is going to impact the commute in some major cities such as philadelphia washington dc and new york well as we look at the situation this is what we see out there we're looking at the big satellite picture showing the eastern coast and certainly we have some of the showers uh, coming on down actually a large area of rain most of it's just off the coast of long island but it is going to be making its way up toward town so if you're planning to go out tonight you definitely need the umbrella also some showers out close to dc those are sweeping through also sweeping through up toward baltimore down the deep south one or two thunderstorms one lone thunderstorm it looks like out across central Alabama should be bypassing Montgomery. Looking at the situation we do have rain showers out across the northeast. Some of these are quite heavy. Cold front across northern areas of uh, the United States into Canada not affecting the states quite yet tomorrow maybe a little bit but what a great day today in Maine all the way up to uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. Temperature hit 80 degrees today in Burlington. Sometimes that doesn't happen in the middle of summer. So it is a beautiful day today up across all of New England with, as you can see, the satellite picture showing us a clear sky still across Maine. Farther to the south, down toward New York City, southward, out of the ocean, the clouds are streaming in, and with the clouds, plenty of heavy showers, too. Sort of looks like one of those classic hurricane pictures, doesn't it, where you have those bands of rain coming on in, inching up toward the coast. Of course not. This is not a hurricane here, just a low-pressure center, but... The rain is moving up the coast. Back over to Baltimore and D.C. Yes, it is raining in D.C. Some of the scenes around D.C., this is the Washington Monument, obviously, and some people had the umbrellas out with occasional shower around. Rain today on and off should be picking up a little bit this afternoon. And then we may see that batch of rain move on through and it dry out for a short while, but not so terrible of a day. Closer view again, showing down to Baltimore, D.C., under the rain presently. Friday afternoon rush hour around the Beltway. It's going to be slow, likewise up around New York City. Down to the south, here comes the cold front slicing on through Big Bend of Florida, back over towards central Texas. Thunderstorms also beginning to build on up. 
Here are the temps, practically 90 today in Houston, almost 90 also down toward uh, Miami. But we do have some showers and thunderstorms with this blob of clouds here heading down across South Florida. Into Birmingham, first of all, showing you one or two thunderstorms heading just to the north of Montgomery, maybe some small hail with that. But check this out here. Look down in South Florida. Here comes the storms, practically a squall line ready to make its way over to Key West and over to Miami. You can expect the storms coming on in probably over about the next, uh, looks like hour and a half or two and a half hours. Out across the Midwest, scattering of showers today. Overall temperatures close to average or slightly below. Not a real cold day, but with the clouds and the rain out there, it made it feel a little bit colder today. Regional view of the radar showing where those showers are scattered across Ohio, Indiana, actually some severe storms northeast Indiana. With more about what's going on in the plains in the west, here's Janetta. All right, thanks, Rich. As we head farther west, we find an area of low pressure in the upper plains that is going to be the culprit for more rain in the east, and that will come later this weekend. It's also going to help to bring down some colder air out of Canada. As the low moves southward, a high will build in from Canada, and that will mean a little cooler regime for folks. We've already seen some cooler weather across North Dakota today because with this low, you know what? We've been looking at some snow. Yeah, Minot, North Dakota has been reporting some light snow mixing in with the light rain. So that's the deal on this first day of May. A little bit of snow action for you. And you can see where the frontal boundary is. So we have our front, we have an upper low right about here. All of that will be heading south and eastward and as that does so we're going to bring down that high out of Canada and that's what will bring in the cooler air. Guess what this is? This is our next frontal boundary, our next big story as far as the weather goes. It's already pulling in the clouds, already pulling in the moisture to places like Northern California. Arcata has been getting rain. We see rain on into Eureka. And San Francisco has been getting some rain throughout the day, too. Yes, the streets were slick. Yes, we had to use the windshield wipers and the umbrellas and the jackets because it was sort of a cool day, along with the clouds and the scattered showers. You are having to deal with the possibility of, uh, yeah, more of this throughout the weekend. All right, checking out the precipitation. We see it from San Francisco to Chico on back towards Mount Shasta. Eureka has been seeing some rain too. Back towards the Intermountain West, well, we're seeing some scattered showers for you in Denver. Going to be uh, sort of a rough commute for you. Walla Walla, 90 degrees yesterday. Yeah, we had some record heat throughout the Northwest today. Not quite as hot. We're talking about 70s and 80s. So that's the way things are shaping up across the West. Let's look at the forecast and here is uh, Rich. Okay, Jeanetta, as we look at our forecast for this evening, here comes the cold front. You saw the storms in South Florida. Some of those could be rather strong or even severe. Other strong storms, severe storms, northeast Indiana, around New York City, wet tonight. Baltimore, D.C. looks like up to Philadelphia. Tomorrow morning, rain showers sticking around Boston all the way down toward Pittsburgh. Across the southern United States, Pretty decent. We may see some isolated storms, but overall, nice uh, day across the south. Locally heavy rain, some cases we're talking about an inch or more. You saw where that heavy rain's off the New Jersey coast heading up toward Long Island, maybe southern New England picking up some appreciable amounts. That's only all the way up through midnight, too, and pretty soon we'll be uh, updating our forecast to show all the way up through noon. So I have a feeling we'll still show the heavy rain out across the New England coast. Temps tonight rather pleasant into the 50s and 60s in the southern United States. To the north, rather cool, 20s and 30s, even with a little bit of that snow today falling into the upper Midwest. So it's going to stay chilly for a while. And it's going to stay a little bit wet for you folks in the Northeast if you're wanting to know about your travel conditions. We'll check that out in TravWise after local forecast. This program was sponsored by Cadillac. The great performers are always creating a higher standard.
So Nicoderm CQ is working for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing just fine, cold turkey. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Take a break. Oh, nice one. Come on, you know we quit. KYW3, live from Independence Mall. 